Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Will we stand to our feet, please? Amen. Praise God. How many are ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and ask the Lord to just take full control of this service from beginning to end. Allow his presence to overwhelm us. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be alive again, Father God. We ask that you just bless this service right now, Father God. I pray for our worship team, Lord, and our pastor, Father God, this morning. That you would just use them in a mighty way to usher and bring your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for meeting us here this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
just feel like we really need to bask in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And most of the songs that we're doing this morning are pretty new, relatively new, but and they are powerful songs. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit flood you this morning. Rest in His presence. Whatever your need is, He's here to meet it and can give you peace and rest in your heart, mind, soul, and spirit this morning. So faithful, so constant, so loving and so true, so powerful in all you do, you feel me.
Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Where are you, God? What happened to you, God? I felt you Sunday morning. Where are you now, God? When my world is collapsing around me. When the doctor says, your cancer's back. When the doctor says, there's no cure for what you have. When you look in your bank account, and somehow it's below zero. God, how did this happen? Where are you now, God? He's right there with you. He's walking with you. Not only that, He's carrying you. He's carrying you. He said, I did, he said that in Scripture. As a father would carry his son, he carries us. So I'm reminded as we sing this song, we're going to sing that last part again. Hallelujah, I don't even know where we are, but you do. I know that you are for me. Hallelujah, I know that you are for me this morning. And if you don't know that, you're going to find out in a little few moments. Sing us with us. And those goosebumps that you feel going up and down your spine. That's just the Lord reminding you. Hallelujah. You can actually feel Him in the room this morning. Sing it again. So So constant. So loving and so true, so powerful in all you do, you feel me. You see me, you know my every move, you love for me.
And this song has been a lifesaver for me. When I moved here, I took a step of faith moving here, and I love Pastor and Miss Donna, but it was a hard decision. I left my child in Texas, and seven months it took me to find a job. But the Lord is faithful. Yes. And two and a half years later, I resigned from my job this week. And to leave something that I had to do, and God really showed me this week that that's something I need to do. And I really took a leap of faith. I don't have a job in the works, but I know that He will provide. I don't hope that He'll provide. I know that He will provide. He's going to provide, Robert and Lily. There's no doubt. He will provide. Amen. Be still and remember what he has done in the past because he will do that again and he will do more and he will exceed that.
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes all we can say is you are good. Amen. That's all we can say. And we have to just continue in that spirit, church. God is able. Amen. I'm continuing a series that I started of two or three weeks ago entitled Getting Out of Your Cave. I talked to you about David when he was in the cave of Adullam, and uh, I started last week on Elijah, and Elijah had a big cave that he got into. You remember Evangelist Elijah? He came and he prophesied to Israel and said, because of your backslidden condition, God's going to shut the heavens up. And it's not going to rain for three and a half years. And it did just that. God sent Elijah on a trip, sent him over to the brook Sharif. Mary serves me right. And uh, he was spending time with God, sending him food every day, meat and bread. I don't know where he got it during a drought, but a raven would bring it to him and drop it off and say, here's your dinner from God. Amen. Amen. Uh, and then God sent him to Zarephath and uh, a couple other places that escapes my memory. But uh, then after three and a half years, God sent him back to Mount Carmel. And <clears throat> he told Israel, <clears throat> We're going to find out who God is. The God that answers by fire. You'll find that story somewhere around 1 Kings 17. Uh, you can turn in that general area. But the God that answers by fire. And so the prophets of Baal gathered around their altar that they had built. And they put a sacrifice on it and prayed all day. Prayed all night, cried, cut themselves, chanted, did everything they could to get their God to answer by fire. Elijah strolled up. And he said, the first thing he did was rebuild the altar. Because they had tore it all up. He rebuilt the altar. Then to make sure that they knew this was God... He said, I'm going to pour 12 barrels of water on this fire. I mean, on this altar. To make sure there's no spark. That's, if, if we don't do this, they'll say, well, the prophet of Baal started the fire. You just picked up on it. A lot of people taking credit for other people's work. Hello, Washington. <laughs> so they poured 12 barrels on it. Then if memory serves me correct, in 1 Kings, somewhere around the 17th or 18th chapter, Elijah prayed a prayer. And at one time I counted the words of that little prayer. It was 26 words. You don't have to have a long, long prayer. And as Reuben said, you don't have to have long, long arms. <laughs> You little armed people can reach to God. I understand how that works. I'm going to stop right there. So I brought us up to that point, and, and Elijah had this great move of God, a great revival, and Israel repented and turned to God. Then Elijah turned around and he killed 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Jezebel, killed 850 prophets. And then Jezebel sent him word. Said, if you're still here by this time tomorrow, I'll deal with you. And Elijah got afraid and he took off. He ran. He wasn't running in circles. He had a destination. 
He was headed back to Mount Horeb. He wanted to go where God would listen to him, where he could hear from God. He needed to hear from God. He hadn't heard from God. God wasn't talking to him at this point. He said, I need to hear from God. I'm going back where I saw God move because I need a special word from God. You ever needed a special word from God? He sent it to us over several hundred years and several authors writing it. He sent us the word. So this morning I want to start I want to start out. I want to read you some verses. First Kings 19. Now Elijah, by the way, is in the cave. And at the 11th verse, we'll start there. He said, this is God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind tore into the mountain, broke the rocks into pieces before the, uh, before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake came by. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a still, small voice. I felt that still small voice this morning. Amen. Sometimes we think we have to jump over the pews and swing from the chandeliers. We don't have no chandeliers and we don't have any pews. But we think we got to have some kind of monstrative, demonstrative demonstration of God. But He shows up. If we're listening... That still small voice. Let me bring you up to date where we are on this message. Elijah went on the run. He ran for quite a ways. He sat down and he went to sleep under a juniper tree. God woke him up. said, get up and eat. He got up and he ate. And he drank and he laid back down and went to sleep. The angel of the Lord woke him up again and said, get up and eat. I told you last week that sometimes we get out of sorts because we're not taking care of this body. I like that verse when God said, get up and eat. <laughs> I've heard the voice of the Lord on that many times. <laughs> but sometimes your body needs to, its proper nutrition and some rest. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Sometimes we go, go, go. We don't know how to shut it off. Yeah. We don't know how to turn it off. So he needed the time of rest and refreshment. Then I told you that he had to face his fears. See, the thing he ran from, he had to go back and face. Amen. See, running doesn't mean the problem goes away. He said, well, I'm leaving Reno. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not because you shot a man in Reno. <laughs> Those of you that know Johnny Cash know what I'm talking about. It, it always bothers me when people don't get the reference. <laughs> But you had to, he had to face his fear. Yes. Running from it doesn't change anything. No. Because when you get to where you're going, you're going to have to face that fear there. <clears throat> then I told you, this is where I am today. He needed a new vision of God. And God was trying to give Elijah a new vision of these scriptures that are read to you this morning. God came to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? In verse 13, what are you doing here? Let me back up. To verse, I know it's in here, I'm looking for it. He said that beforehand. Beforehand. 
He said, what are you doing here? I can back up and find it, but how many will trust me? Verse 9. Thank you, brothers. On the board, I didn't say it. Thank you. He said to them, what are you doing here? See, God will come to you and say, why are you here? He will grab you sometimes. And I'm going to explain that in a few minutes why we do that, why he does that in our lives. Some people don't get why God does things in their lives, in our lives. But he came to us and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah had a great answer in the next verse. He said, I've been zealous for you, God. I've been very zealous. He said, and before the children of Israel, I they had forsaken the covenant, thrown down your altars. He said, I've slain the prophets. And yet it's me. And only me. Last week I told you, sometimes we get in a pity party. And that's a rough place to be. How many of you ever had a pity party? Slip your hand up all over the building. How many have one now? <laughs> How many love me? Amen. Wow. I was hoping that would be unanimous. <laughs> How many put up with me? There you go. That's the rest of you. That's good. Because sit down, I'm going to tell you something. I get tired. You, you don't really have to leave, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I get tired of people looking everywhere and every place for God to move. I don't know about you, but I felt God in this place this morning. I felt the Spirit of the Lord in this place this morning. But a mighty wind, he, 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 that's what Elijah said. I want to see God, and all of a sudden, but I want to see him how he used to be. How he's always shown up. He said, a mighty wind tore across the face of the mountain, shattered the rock, but the Lord was not in the wind. I thought about that for a moment. How many people will run around looking for God's hand in the wind. There's a certain evangelist, and I gotta see if I can find it. Sent my coat to the cleaners and they took my handkerchief out. And I didn't put one back in it. I can't use this one because that's for showing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got a handkerchief? <laughs> Thank you. Man with boots can't be all bad. This is not a handkerchief. But it'll work for my illustration. There's a man out in the televangelist world that will wave his handkerchief like that. And 300 people will fall down. I'm not going to call his name. But his initials are BH. <laughs> people will drive hundreds of miles to feel that touch. And feel that. And that's, I, I, you know, I got to tell you something. I have real problems with that. Hello? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to those meetings, have at it. If you're mailing them monthly monies, have at it. That's, good. that's between you and God. But I want you to know something. You don't have to go there to feel God. Amen. Amen. The Lord was not in the wind. In fact, I can almost promise you, if you're running to those places for that reason, you'll probably get the same word Elijah got. The Lord is not in that place. 
Then there was an earthquake. Or that after the, the wind, there was an earthquake. I thought of another man that was a televangelist that has a, a dynamic moving church back east, one of the largest churches past the Great Divide. Has initials of RP. I said, who's that? It's not Rod Parson. Well, maybe it is. And what a mighty move when you look at it on television. And you go there looking for the hand of God and nothing happens. Because for you, the Lord was not in that place. Elijah. There was an earthquake. And a fire. But it says the Lord was not in that fire. There's a church in Northern California, I'll not name it. But when you're sitting in the pews, sometimes gold dust will fall down on you. So they tell us. I've often thought about taking our offering bags. <laughs> Or if not that, I'll stop by Kentucky Fried Chicken and get one of their big buckets emptied and just catch some. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of hype and misleading things going on out there. Hallelujah. But God told Elijah, God was not in that place. He was not in that situation. He said the Lord was not in the earthquake. And so sometimes we look around and we wonder. And God said, and Elijah, and God said to Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah didn't know where God was. This past week, we've seen the world in turmoil. Uh, if you don't know what prophetically timetable we're on, you need to wake up and look and listen. Because I'm telling you, Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone told me today they went to a restaurant, walked inside to pick up their order. It was a fast food place. And he said, how much was it? He said, and he pulled out the cash to pay the man. We don't take cash. What are we going to, what's going on, Pastor? We're headed to our cashless society. Everything the Bible's talked about is happening even as we speak. Yes. Amen. This past week I was watching some of the things. It's been plastered on our television. Individuals being tortured. Women beaten and killed in the street. People dropping 2,000 feet from a plane as they grasp onto just to escape death. And many have asked, where's God in all this? Where's God? Where's God with this people are going through this? Why doesn't God do something? Job's in chapter 23. Verse 2, he said, Even today my complaint is still bitter. My hand is in heavy despite. My groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. What a cry he made. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Have you ever been there and said, Oh, God, I can't feel you. I can't see you. Where are you in my, in my pain? Where are you in my situation when my family is falling apart? Where are you in my situation when my job is falling apart? Where are you in my situation when my body is falling apart? Oh, that I knew, verse 3, Oh, that I knew where I might find you. I would lay out my case before him and fill my mouth with complaints. Maybe that's why he couldn't find him. I don't know. 
He goes on in verse 8, I go forward, but he's not there. I'm backward, but I can't perceive him to the left, and I can't behold him to the right. I cannot see him. Everywhere that I look, where's God in my life right now? Where's God in my marriage right now? God, where are you? We need you now. Amen. Where's God in your tor turmoil, in your pain, in your sickness, in your abandonment? Where's God? I'm going to tell you where God is. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Just so there's no doubt, listen to me. Matthew 1 and 23 says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Where is God? He's with us. When you're going through your problems, when you're going through the fire, when you're going through pain and turmoil, God is with you. He's never left you. He's always there. Job said, I don't know that. I can't see him. Where is he when I can't see him? Where is he when I can't feel him? Where is he when I can't hear him? Where is he when I can't touch him? Let me explain something to you. No terrorists. No pandemic, no attack, no persecution, no death, no sting is too big to separate us from God. His love uh, is always there. His, in the turmoil of chaos, the ashes, the bodies, the questions, and the tears, God was and will always be here. He is a, has a ministry of presence in our lives. Job learned that. And he said in the following verse, verse 10, well, but behold, he knows the way that I've taken. <coughs> when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Yes. Elijah, God knows where you're at. He didn't ask you that question because he wondered. He knew. Yes. He wanted you to know. Yes. Sometimes we go through a, spirit, a, a season of still in our life. A season of no words from God. A season of not understanding. God, why is this happening? God, I want to know. I really want to know, God, why am I going through this? Let me explain something. You're not the only one that said that. You're not the only one that's felt that before. Many others that come before you have felt that. I was reading a writer by the name of F.W. Robertson and his take on this. And he has a I want to share some of this with you. There are some people, some spirits, who must go through a discipline comparable to that that Elijah went through. The storm, the struggle must proceed the still small voice. you got to go through that before you can get to that still small voice. I was thinking, I was just I had my mic as Linda was sharing this morning about her situation. She said, I know God is going to take care of it. Amen. And I was waiting, and I waited, and I got my mic, and was about to ask her, how do you know that? But she went ahead and read my mind. Because God did it before. Amen. How do we know? Because God's never left us. He's always been there. He's never forsaken us. And He never will. You go through the storm. You go through the struggle in order to get to that still small voice. If you've been through the struggle, then you know how to be still. I like that song we sang this morning. Be still. See, there are minds which must be threshed about with doubt before they can rest in faith. Come on. Come on. There are hearts that must be broken with disappointment before they can rise up into hope. There are dispositions like Job that must have all things taken from them before they can find all things again. And God, you say, well, I've lost, I've lost everything. Get ready. Because God's going to return it. Listen to me. Hallelujah. I don't know how Job got in this message this morning, but he's here. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Job lost everything, all of his family, all of his money, all of his wealth, everything that he had, and he, and he was covered with boils. Yes. And he sat down ready to, he just was ready to quit and give up. Yes. And he had some great counselors that came along and made it worse. Yes. Sometimes you just want to say, in the name of Jesus, shut up. <laughs> Sometimes count, some counseling can be done without. Amen. But he had to go through this before he could get to the point and lose everything before God could give it back to him. God's going to give it back. Amen. Some of you felt well. And I, I don't, I'm going to say this, and I don't know why, just it's in my heart and spirit this morning. Someone has, has said, you know, I lost a child. Job lost all of his. But God gave it back to him. Some have said, I've lost a marriage. Joseph's wife looked at him, why don't you just curse God and die? I don't know what he was thinking at that point. I know what I would be thinking at that point. But he had to go through that to get to the point where he was at. But God, he said, I know that God's with me. If you read the back of the book of Job, you find out that God blessed him greater in the latter end than he did in the former. Amen. See, God wants to bring you a greater blessing, but sometimes you got to lose it all in order to get it all. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't get back what you haven't lost. Amen. I know those preachers in Dallas say you don't have to lose it. Well, I'm living in my world. I live in a world of reality. And sometimes you lose it. But always God gives it back. It may not be the same like you think it ought to be. In fact, He may not work by your plan at all. That's what's nice about God. He's got His own plans. He's got His own way of doing things. In fact, I like that because His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So I know that and, and the Bible says, He's in heaven and He doeth this. He wills. He's a sovereign God. Yeah. And His ways are a lot better than mine. Yeah. I got news for you. If, I did, if everything went my way, <laughs> Psalms 46 and 10 says, Be still. I didn't tell the worship team this, this week was going to be in my message. Be still. And know that I am God. The Lord wants Elijah to know that he's not in the earthquakes or the fire, the huge events that we sometimes and most often encounter where we encounter God. He's in the still small voice, the forgotten places of life. Have you forgotten the altar? Have you forgotten the, the family prayer room? Have you forgotten your alone time with God? Have you forgotten to get up early in the morning? David said, I'm going to get up early in Psalms 5. I'm going to rise up early and I'm going to meet with Him. Hallelujah. Have you forgotten that? Is that your forgotten place? Sometimes we meet God in that small forgotten place of our life. I want to share a story with you. How many know that I am human? I knew somewhere during this message I was going to get an amen. That's a good place. But a few months ago I was complaining about something that happened. And no, you don't need to know what it was. You want to know what it is? How many would like to know what it is? It might be you. <laughs> but it really doesn't matter what I was complaining about. 
But I was sitting down with my beautiful wife. God has blessed me. I don't, man. Uh, <laughs> God gave me a jewel. Hallelujah. She wonders some days why she, I don't lavish her with diamonds. I said, I don't want to take away from the value of the diamonds. Hallelujah. But I was sitting down with my better half. And I was complaining. She listened for a while. And then she listened some more. <laughs> Finally, she decided she had heard enough. <laughs> and I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some advice. You want to chuck on somebody's ear about somebody? My wife is not the one to do it to, because she will stop you. I found that out. Oh, you're looking at me funny. I know that behind your mask. But I'm just like you. So pretty soon she got enough. Of my complaining. And she said, what wives say to complaining husbands? Since the beginning of time, they've all said the same thing. Grow up. <laughs> and I did what most men did I didn't like it for one thing I didn't want to grow up I wanted to complain hey that's what I wanted to do she says stop complaining and open your eyes Look around and see what God has done for us. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say that to you this morning. Stop complaining in your spirit. Yeah. Look around. Oh, I heard. Oh, there's times that I would walk and I would cry as I walked. And I would sit down and I would cry. And Donna would sit down and cry with me, but she would say, Look around. See how blessed we are. Thank you. See how blessed we are. Now you may not be able to feel your blessing right now. You may not be able to see your blessings. But I promise you, if you look around, you look around your house. How many is living in a house? You're blessed. How many got a roof over your head? Let's put it that way. You're blessed. Even if it leaks, you're blessed. We can fix that. So there's a game that you we decided we could play. We could look around and see how many times, how many God sightings we could find every day. And you know what we found? We discovered that if we paid attention every day, there are always a handful of God sightings. Amen. God doing something. Every day, there's God's doing something. I get up in the morning. Every day, God's doing something. I'm looking for something that God's doing. I'm no longer looking for something to complain about. I no longer look around and say, man, the price of sodas have doubled. <laughs> we were thinking the other day, I was worried about our vehicle because we're only getting nine miles to the gallon. I said, Wait a minute, that can't be right. And I started to question Miss Donna's math, but I knew better. I've already been in trouble with her. <laughs> so it came to me. She drives me everywhere. You thought I was going to say she drives me crazy. I know what you thought. <laughs> she drives me everywhere now. I don't drive much anymore. But I don't get out of the car much either. So she leaves me sitting in the car. I leave the car running with the air conditioning on. 
I have him look over at the panel, the, the display panel, where it gives you your gas mileage at the time. You know how many gas, how many miles to the gallon I was getting? Zero. Zero. So when you add that into the equations, I said, hey, I figured out our problem. She said, well, we're going to have to fix that problem. We're still working on it. We discovered if you look around, you can find God everywhere. Sometimes it's just a small little thing that God would do. Just something that causes us to say, that was the Lord who did that for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes it might be had someone this happened several times to call me to are you going to be home about four o'clock? And I say to myself, well, why? <laughs> if you're going to come over and beat me up, no. <laughs> but they said, oh, we want to drop dinner off. The first time that happened, I thought, now I know this gentleman, he's a sweet, lovely man, but I thought, I doubt if he can cook. <laughs> he brought us two of the most juiciest, thick, beautiful steaks and asparagus and baked potato and the cover said BJ's. <laughs> I said, he can cook. <laughs> and he's done that several times. We said, thank you, Lord. Yes, he knew that Miss Donna didn't feel like cooking. He knew that we needed that. It's not the matter that we needed the meal. We needed to feel. Yes. Sometimes you don't need the meal. You need to feel. Yes. But you just feel like God, you're still there. You're still in life. Yeah. You're still blessing. And I'm moving on. I better hurry up. So he had to remind Elijah that he was not alone. And he, so he gave God, he gave Elijah a new vision. He corrected him. But then he had to redirect him. Now I'm going to spend just a few minutes, I'm going to say when it's smoky outside, it's comfortable in here. Okay? Amen. If you're hungry, raise your hand. We'll get you something out of the bag to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we know there's food back there because brother brought it this morning. It ain't cooked. <laughs> he needed a new mission in his life. God will redirect you. In verse 13, he repeats that question that he wrote to him. He said, what are you doing here? Again, Elijah repeats his answer. Not a good answer. The first part of it was pretty good. The second part was okay. The third part was, yeah, that's true. The fourth part was totally false. Because he said, he said, I've been very zealous. Yes, he had been very zealous for the Lord. And he had done a lot of things. And he said, Verse uh, 13, brother. Not the one I'm looking for. I'll find it. Let me just back up. asking that question. I got it marked and I've got it laid out somewhere and I skipped some pages and to get over this. You guys are looking too, I know.
But he said I'd been very jealous. I'm looking for the part, last part of that. Look at 14 just for a moment. Flip there. The last part, there it is. He said, but I'm the only one. I, I'm the only one. That, that was the mistake you had made. God said, no, you're not. You're not the Lone Ranger. You're not in this by yourself. Some people think, I'm thinking, oh, I'm the only one going through this. You know, gloom, despair, agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Boy, I know that song. God said, that's not true. Sometimes God has to tap us on the shoulder and remind us, you're not in this by yourself. He said, there's over. He said, I, I, I'm going to give you a new job, uh, Elijah. I'm going to send you back. Uh, God, had, he, Elijah had accomplished uh, really more than he thought. Uh, but uh, those, he said, there are 7,000 that's hidden in cave. You don't even know where they're at. But I've got 7,000 that have never bowed their knee, that have never worshipped Baal. They've been tucked away. They've been hidden away. Uh, I don't blame Elijah that he didn't know because they were hidden. Uh, they had to to survive. Uh, he said, but there's 7,000. There are people standing with you, church. Uh, there are friends. Uh, there are church members. Uh, there are people that are standing by you. That are, that you're not alone. You're not, been, uh, you, you're not in this thing by yourself. God is with you. Amen. What do you learn from that? One of the things, we can't sometimes, we can't estimate our own effectiveness of many times. Come on. Elijah didn't even know what all he had done. You and I sometimes wrongly estimate both our victories and our defeats. Elijah didn't know he was, there was other people. Let me give you some advice. Don't try to figure that out. Just do your best and leave it to God. Amen. He'll take care of it. Praise He'll bring people in your life. Yeah. He, knows he knows better than we do the lives that have been changed by our service for Christ. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, that was one of my complaints. What are we doing? How, how are we doing? Donna said, you know, Sometimes we look around and not accomplishing much. What are we? What's what's going on? Sometimes we, every preacher worth the salt, have said this. Hello, preachers. Amen. What 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 good are we doing? Anybody can do this. Amen. <laughs> oh, anybody here this morning? <laughs> <laughs> we want to pass it over to nobody let me tell you something if Satan can't to get to us externally he'll get to us internally Amen. he'll attack us it was no surprise that Elijah's greatest victory and his greatest defeat were back to back Let me say that again. His greatest victory and his greatest defeat were back to back. But let me tell you something I told you last week and I'm closing. In fact, come on up under the piano. That way people will believe I am actually closing. <laughs> I'm going to say this one more time. It's not a sin to be discouraged. And listen to me. You're here this morning. Don't think God gave me this for, for, for the out of the blue for nothing. Don't think that God just gave me this Amen. to take up 45 minutes. He gave me this because you're here and I can put my finger at you this morning. The Holy Spirit has already spoke to me. It's not a sin to be discouraged. It's not a sin to be depressed. It's what you do when you're discouraged yeah. and depressed and feeling hopeless that matters. Don't fight the battle alone. Get some help. Get all the help you need. Make a phone call. 
This church is full of people that love you and want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know why. I, there are some people I know that I can just share my heart with. That's a good thing. And they don't think less of you, of you for it. That is a problem that I get. To, I can't share that with, with anybody. They'll, they'll think something's wrong with me. <laughs> Hello? They know something's wrong with me. <laughs> Get all the help you need. And remember this. God is still there. Yes. He hasn't left you. Hallelujah. He hasn't left you without a plan. That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. There's no pit so deep that the love of God is not deeper. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. If you're discouraged, be encouraged this morning. He still loves you. He has not forgotten you. In your deepest, darkest cave, God says, go out and stand in the mouth of the cave. I wrapped himself in his cloak and he came out. That was not an easy thing for him to do with the power of God. It's not an easy thing. But God will bring you through it. I wonder if I could just ask you for a moment to bow your heads all over the building. Maybe close your eyes for just a moment. This is a personal moment. But if you're here this morning you have found yourself in a cave of discouragement. A cave of depression. A cave of emptiness in your life and you said I don't know what I'm going to do pastor I want to pray with you this morning right where you're at just slip it up and down God bless you God bless you God bless you anybody quickly God bless you hallelujah I'm going to ask God bless you all over the building would you stand with us this morning I'm not going to point individuals out. That would do them no good. It would certainly do me no good. We don't count trophies down here. This is between you and God. So those of you that raised your hand, along with those that didn't, or could you just could you just take your neighbor by the hand for a moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't want to hold their hand, just put your hand on their shoulder. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. I don't want to tell you something. God brought you here this morning to hear the word of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, God, as I come to you, Father, with the authority of the Word of God behind us. God, we speak to this cave situation that people are in. Father, we ask that you help them out. Father, you didn't condemn Elijah. You didn't put him down. Father, you gently, in a spiritual way, wrapped your spiritual arms around him as he cloaked himself. God, that was top of your presence. Father, you are a God of presence. When we ask that question, where are you? You're right here. And Father, for those hands that were raised this morning, I ask God that you would touch them this morning. God, that they would feel your hand. Your hands wrapping around, your arms wrapping around them. In Jesus' name. Hello. Um.